Good morning. Today is October 4th, 2022. And today I have a nice game for you, a nice teaching game for you. Basically, I'm not going to do the standard puzzle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a game where you have a one very specific tactical consideration and you want and you want to be able to see in the positions on the move on the board where to you know where where to do it how to do it when to do it so try to recognize this certain tactical consideration and the tactical shot is fork and let me show you what i mean here real quick over here let's say i move up no i move my piece of over here uh, here Okay, there you go. So I move my bishop over here, right? And I'm threatening both the queen and the rook. And I'm about to gain material because the queen cannot take the bishop since it's guarded by the rook. And so the queen will have to go somewhere and I will then take the rook with my bishop. And either the king take the bishop or the rook take bishop either way. I win material, I win the exchange, and I will win the game, basically. So, with that in mind, uh, take it easy, uh, sit back, relax, take a pen and paper if you want. There will be three positions where you get to apply this four tactics over here, and write, it, write the position down, and I'm going to go through the position the game very quickly and then once it's done then I'm going to go analyze the, the game and I will point out to you where the fork combination is available in this case I play black over here you can tell I'm playing black over there so the forking combination is going to be available for white so white has three opportunities to fork my pieces, but that did not happen. <coughs> anyway, if you are ready, let's begin. So I'm going to step through the game really quickly and write down the position the number over here like the number of the move over here and write them down and see if you can recognize them it's going to go very quickly because this is a blitz game so yes it's done very rapidly so train yourself to be able to recognize the pattern very very quickly let's begin At this point, this is uh, the end of the opening stage, so we are starting to begin the middle game. Let's continue.
at this point we are entering the end game and well uh, let's continue At this point, the end game has been reached, and obviously I'm going to win very, very easily. Anyway, uh, I've shown you the game, and hopefully you found three positions where White has the ability to fork my pieces and actually won the game. So, with that in mind, let's go back to the beginning, and I'll explain to you how the game works, and I'll point to I'll point out to you all the possibilities, all the position where what could have fought my pieces and won the game. The game begins innocently enough, as usual. And this is pretty common position right here. Uh, bishop here is rather premature, usually what does this or maybe does that. Uh, this is rather premature, not unheard of, but uh, rather premature. And usually what happened is that white would wait until I move the knight here, then move the bishop. So this is certainly a different way to get it. This is pretty typical of my opening here. Look at the structure of the pawn. And ideally, I want to push the pawn here and lock the bishop on that area for you. So lock the white pieces on that part, on that side of the board. And then I can attack this side of the board and hopefully make a breakthrough. At this point, white should concentrate to break apart uh, this position, this pawn over here, by pushing the pawns like as quickly as possible. Uh, so that's a it becomes a race. And if Black Castle this way, which I usually do, then it becomes a very interesting game. In fact, I usually do because I usually use my king as bait. So what want to will want to attack my king and I'll defend it and then hopefully white make a mistake somewhere and I'll win. <coughs> Let's continue. This is a breakthrough movement basically. I need to get rid of the bishop, but I also want to start taking out these two pawns over here. Try to take out all the pawns over here so I can attack in the center. This is again typical. I usually choose either put the queen here or if the Queen move somewhere else, put put the dog over here and attacking this pawn over here. Very deadly. So that's something to consider about. Now if you look at the position over here, 
what is threatening the rook so what I did is I moved the rook there and this is a forking combination over there so that's position number one fork number one position number 15 over here what could have fork over there and win the exchange win the rook so he should have done that he did not do it he pushed back over there so missed one opportunity right there next move oh yeah that's very clever right there uh, actually that's not too clever because uh, the queen is you know threatening the rook and once the knight moves there the rook has to go back anywhere but it's kind of annoying for white for, for the rook to be there and an interesting part over here is that I could have moved the rook over there over here and pin the knight to, to the queen over here I just not to do that but I could have done it that way Uh, uh, an advantage over here is that if nothing else once the rook is here I can take that pawn over there and assuming it's not by that it's not protected by that knight maybe the knight move here trying to attack the rook over here I can safely do so so anyway next move And again, threatening the rook with the knight. Two knights like that, it can be very powerful, especially with a close position that's pawn over here. With lots of pawns on the board, two knights can be extremely deadly. And that's an example of a fork over there. So. and white takes the pawn he could have done it over here and again fork the king and the rook over there so had he done that I probably would have resigned immediately uh, because really there's no point for me to continue the game but he missed the fork once and he missed the fork twice so uh, that's fine you know like okay let's continue And this is very interesting over here. I could have gone do something else like over here, move the bishop over here. But instead I choose the dangerous part over here. And this is more like a speculation on my part over here. I'm not trying to play a defensive game anymore. I'm trying to play an offensive game. So, so this is kind of like speculation on my part. And of course, there is this forking possibility, which having seen that white failed to fork me twice, I said, well, let's do the fork over here, see what happens. And sure enough, there you go. When you're behind the material, it's not a good idea to exchange pieces. Okay, so yes, I'm happy to take it. And I win the material here. 2 points, 2 points 7, very close to 3 so I do this one here and notice the evaluation goes directly to 6 from minus 2 to 6 and because this is the third position where white could have one over there right there and it would fork this one and basically uh, that's it like I'm gonna have to trip the nuts with the rook and the, and what has two extra pawns so yeah what, what would I have for this one 
I probably would play a few more movies if that happens, but as long as White knows what he's doing, I probably would have to decide. So, pick this one over here. And I decided not to type fade because at this point I, I saw that folk over there and let's not type fade. Mm, yeah. And this is basically to annoy the white by harassing the, the knight, really. So, just basically annoy and harass them. And this is a very strong move by white because rook lies behind the pawn, so it's very strong. And of course, there's always possibility of knight to come in somewhere over here and try to, you know, secure the squares over here. So in the worst case scenario, I'm going to retreat my rook with the knight over here. So let's move on. It locks in the position over here. So, uh, notice that it cannot be easily this lots over here. So maybe over here, move here, move here, or maybe uh, move. Uh, let's see. No, I think that's about it. Yeah. So I think that's about it. So the king can best click off for that. And this is a blunder by white because the knight is hanging. And all I have to do is calculate if I take the knight, can white do anything drastic? The answer to that is no. So just take the knight. And that's totally useless, really. I can do two things over here. Number one, I can push the rook over here and take that one next turn. But of course, I have to guard about this position over here when the king would take this one. So I have to be able to cut this one. Now I can move the rook over here, but that's too passive. And I would like to complicate things a little bit more. So next move. And that secures that side. And now I'm moving to take this pawn out of here. When you're behind material, it's a bad idea to trade. And at this point in time, I know I'm going to win. Now, we can stop here if you like. But just the idea. Just by taking one look at the position over here, you can see that this knight, I mean these pawns are in a line. I can park my king over there indefinitely and not do anything. Basically, I can push the pawn here and uh, let's see, I can push the pawn here and then let's say push move here you can put up over here and it's gone so maybe you want to do it that way i can just do it this way and the pawn would have gone to pass yeah, the pass pawn will move toward promotion and I win. So, anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.